excuse me, which of the following is a dual agency situation? Uh, one, two agents share the exclusive right to represent the same client in all transactions. One agent represents both sides of a transaction. A selling agent from one brokerage works with a listing agent from another brokerage to complete a transaction. Uh, one agent represents two sellers at the same time. I put uh, one agent represents both sides of the transaction, um, but I was thrown off because I thought dual agency was with the broker. So then I got confused and then I just did something. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. So let, let's step back, right? The, the word that stood out for you is you understanding the word dual agency. Okay, so let's let's review in terms of dual agency. First, probably I am going to take you back to what is an agent. Um, so here, let's go back a little bit. I think on my slide. So when somebody gets into an agency relationship and push on your side, we're gonna mute um because the music oh, is that's okay that's okay so when you have the agency relationship that relationship is between the agent and the client right agent in this particular exam or in the definition who is the agent so when we're talking about this particular course who is the agent the agent is the broker. So when you see the word agent, I'm gonna tell you, read further and try and understand, are they talking about the boss or are they talking about me, the worker bee? Agent default is going to be the broker. The broker is the one that has the agreements between the sellers the buyers, the landlords, and the tenant. The client signs an agreement with the agent. For test purposes, you need to dig deeper. When they're looking, at, when they're asking you the question, when they're talking about agent, most likely it's going to be the broker. In practice, we call ourselves agents. So that's why it gets confusing because we're working for the broker. Therefore, we call ourselves agent. But for definitions, I know I'm repeating this again, the agent is the broker. Question probably will be phrased as the licensee. So when they say licensee, most likely that's you. Even though some other questions might end up being the broker as well because the definition of licensee is anyone who's taken the course went and passed the test. That's you right now, you will become a licensee. That's a broker as well in Maryland. After three years of being licensed, they go take a 135 hour course and pass the test. They're still licensed because they took the course and passed the test, okay? So back to this analysis, uh, the agent is the broker. So now we were going to dig deeper on the topic of what, dual agency? So when we're talking about dual agency, it is the broker working for what? Both sides. So the best example that I have for this analysis, and if you've taken a class with me, you must have seen this particular image that I use in all my classes. This is Brenda's definition or simplified, simplified version of dual agency. You have the cat in the hat is the agent or who the manager assigned in an office. So for example, right now you're taking the course with the agency institute. Lee is the broker. She would be in my case, the cat in the hat. If Lee had, let's say three offices. So this is where Lee is the broker for the agency institute. And here is the office in White Marsh. Portia is the manager there. He has another office in Salisbury and Kim is a manager there. 
So Kim and Portia would be the dual agents for those offices. Does that make sense? Because you've been assigned by Lee to lead those offices. So I have a question. So for dual agency, it's not necessarily me as the licensee working for a client on both sides. The dual agency is the fact that we work for the same broker. Correct. Okay. Yes. That's why I use this. All of these three people, um, I didn't grow up watching this animation. So I've been educated that I should be saying that all of these three people worked for work for Dr. Seuss company, right? The manager has been assigned to be the one to oversee this office, or the manager is the broker cat in the hat. Thing one and thing two, thing one works for the buyer, thing two works for the seller. All three of them work for Dr. Sue's company. Okay. Brenda, can you, what was the, can we go back to the question again? I just want to- Sure, sure. Hire the back. Uh, let's see. Only I'm sorry. Blank. Yes. Technology. I know. I was like, why am I drawing a blank? Okay. Here you go. Which so here, which of the do? following is dual agency relationship? Two agents share exclusive right to represent the same client on all transactions. No. The one agent represent both sides in a transaction, okay. A selling agent working for the buyer from one brokerage, let's say red company, works with the listing agent from another brokerage to complete a transaction, no. That's not dual agency, right? Because Kim just say dual agency, same company. One agent represent two sellers at the same time. That's not dual agency. So with dual agency, thing one is working for the buyer, thing two is working for the seller. The cat in the hat is a dual agent, one agent representing both the buyer and the seller because of what? Thing one and thing two have been designated by the cat in the hat to work for the buyer and the seller. Either way, the cat in the hat, the manager, the broker, ends up by default representing both the buyer and the seller. I think with Good this question. question, I had to train my brain to think when I see agent, think broker and not myself. Correct. I have a question. Um, so in a real life example, are you saying that, like, let's just use like a brokerage like Keller Williams. Sorry for the music, my husband's uh, rehearsing. Um, so for Keller Williams, so you're saying that it has to be the one owner who owns multiple brokerages. So you know how Keller Williams have like prefer preferred properties and like capital properties. So if there's a buyer from one and the other, that's not dual agent, is it? Because that's where you kind of come to yourself. Um, so in the real life, all of these companies have their own brokers. They're just yeah, a franchise. Just... So think of McDonald's. The McDonald's on this street is not owned by the same owner on this other street. Two separate companies, but they're under the same franchise. So what I'm going to use is the broker of Keller Williams. What did you give me? What was it? Keller Williams what? Uh, preferred properties. Okay, so the broker of Keller Williams preferred properties is gonna be a totally different broker from Keller Williams whatever. Two got separate okay. companies. I got it, thank you. Yeah, dual agency would be, let's assume the agency institute. You work for the agency institute, I work for the agency institute. Portia, you have the buyer. I have the seller. Who's a dual agent? Lee, the broker. Got it. Okay. I just want to make sure I understood. Yes. Thank you. So it kind of, I guess it's almost like you have a manager that's assigned you and another exactly. one of your coworkers to a project. Yes, exactly. So the agent is the manager. 
yes that's assigned to his two subordinates to yeah. a project exactly. at the same time but you all work for microsoft the one manager <laughs> right but you all yeah. work for the same company right microsoft yeah. whatever yeah xfinity yes that's exactly right yes so the first answer is correct Two agents share exclusive right to represent the same client on all transactions? No. No. Because the first one is two agents okay. share exclusive right to represent the same client on all transactions. No. They're your team enough. Okay. It's it's B. It's the second one. One agent. One agent. Now remember the agent is who the, the agent is the broker okay that's i got it i got it 